Good morning, everybody. Michael the Maven, and today we're going to be talking about the top five Fuji lenses that you should be aware of. I get a lot of emails questioning about Fuji lenses. I talk about it in some of the longer tutorials, but I didn't have a shorter one where I kind of wanted to give a roadmap in terms of what lenses should be on your radar and which ones you should be considering. Right off the bat, the kit lens, the 18 to 55 is a keeper. A word of warning on this lens if you buy this lens separately, brand new, it can cost up to $700. I have seen these all day long on eBay for between two and $300. Who would wanna save $400 on a lens? Very important side note is, is that I would recommend to my best friend is that if you're gonna get this lens, buy your Fuji body separately, buy this lens separately on eBay, try to find a good one, inspect the images, you're gonna save yourself a ton of money. Now there's a story behind this in that when I first got into Fuji cameras, I bought the kit with the lens, and I eventually sold the lens when I upgraded to another lens I'm about to show you, and I regretted it. I actually had to go back and buy another 18 to 55, and that's something that's kind of unusual with other camera systems. I don't really recommend keeping the kit lens. Fuji makes some outstanding lenses. All, all across the board, the, the housing, the quality, this is a great little lens. I would kind of put this into the general purpose traveler category, but if you are a brand new Fuji shooter, this is a no-brainer. It should absolutely positively be your very first lens. Now on the next four lenses, a lot of this is going to depend on the type of shooting that you're doing. And instead of me talking about the order you should buy them in, I am going to be making recommendations based on what they are going to be used for. If somebody put a gun to my head and said you could only have two Fuji lenses for the rest of your life, I would probably take the 18 to 55. In the second lens would be the 50 to 140 2.8. Obviously, this is more of an equivalent. And by the way, all APS-C Fuji lenses have a multiplication factor of 1.5. So if you have a 100 millimeter lens, it's going to behave as a 150 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. It's something important to consider. Now, the reason why I love this lens is because it gives you a nice mid range zoom. It's going to allow you to do portraits. It's going to allow you to do closer sports types of photographies. And between those first two lenses, you're covering a huge amount of focal length range. The optical quality is outstanding. It's light. It has image stabilization. It's a wonderful, tremendous lens, and it's relatively more affordable than its full frame competitors. Uh, I did an epic shootout between the X-T30 and the Sony a6400, and that was something that became apparent to me very quickly is that Fuji lenses have a cost advantage in that they're designed for APS-C, they're smaller and they're lighter. So definitely a great lens. It should be on your radar as one of the first ones to get if you are a Fuji shooter. So this next lens I get questions about. I've been considering doing a review for it. If you get involved in any kind of sports shooting, especially birds in flight, you only have one choice. It's the 100 to 400 variable aperture. It's the only one that Fuji makes. My dad and I have tried everything in regards to adapting other you know, brand lenses onto the Fuji. It just doesn't work the same. This is a wonderful lens for shooting birds, for shooting sports. It's a no brainer. Sometimes they go on sale. I bought this for 1500. It's usually like 18, 1700, but for $1,500 and the quality that you're getting for sports shooting, this should be the first major lens that you're looking at. So let's talk about the fourth lens that should be on your radar. It's the 16 to 55 2.8. It's very easy to confuse in terms of the nomenclature of the kit lens, which is an 18 to 55 2.8 to F4. These are very different lenses, different prices. The 16 to 55, if you are a video shooter, which I am doing mostly videos, 80% of the time I am using this lens, it is sharper, it opens up wider, it has fewer defects in terms of lens, aberrations. It doesn't have optical image stabilization, but if you are a video shooter, it is an absolute must have. Sometimes these go on sale as well. I think they're $1,100 without the sale and we see them drop below $1,000. You can also get these used on eBay for about seven or $800. This is kind of one of those lenses where I say it's kind of better to buy on sale than to buy it used because it is a very high quality lens and spending that extra one to $200 is probably gonna be worth it to buy it brand new. Your fifth lens selection, depending on how you shoot, should be either a wide angle lens or a prime lens. There are some great Fuji prime lenses. I kind of like the 56 1.2 because it's a portrait lens. I'm a portrait photographer. They make an outstanding 16 millimeter 1.4 and a 23 millimeter F2. If you're more of a street photographer, I think that would fit you a little bit better. 
I've done a very detailed review on the wide angle lenses. So if you're doing a lot of landscape photography, I kind of like the 10 to 24 F4 more. It has uh, a threaded ring for filters. The eight to 16 is amazing. It's just very expensive and you're not getting a lot more in terms of exposure. I did some tests demonstrating this. I think it's a little bit overpriced. I like the 10 to 24 a little bit more for landscape type photography shots. So keep in mind that when you are building your lens arsenal, it's very important to choose one at a time, test them out, shoot with it for a little while, find out what you like, find out what you don't like, and if it's not enough, then it would be time to you know, look at, at a different lens. But what's going to happen is as you specialize, you are going to gravitate towards one or two of those first five lenses that I mentioned. They're gonna be kind of in your wheelhouse. Fuji has tons of great other primes, don't get me wrong, but those are the ones you should have on your radar as a beginner. If you're struggling with your Fuji camera, I have excellent tutorials on YouTube and advanced tutorials as well. Check out the links below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.